Ever start something small and then discover it was fun to take it big? You read an awesome story and then you bring the whole thing to life for your friends and family. You bake a batch of chocolate chip cookies and they taste so good, you recruit friends to put on a whole bake sale. And then you use the money you earn to buy bikes for kids who've never had one. You have fun learning a new way to paint. Then you get together with your friends and paint a whole wall. You send a note to encourage someone. I hope you have a great day. And you also work with your friends to throw an entire surprise party. God created you to do amazing things on your own, but he designed you to do even more when you work together to share his love. And then others can see God at work in all of you. That's why cooperation is a fantastic way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. My name is Haley, and as you can see, I love music. And I mean all kinds of music. Rock music. Country music. Hip hop. I love it all. But 
My favorite kind of music is the kind that involves cooperation. Cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. Take an orchestra, for example. It takes all kinds of cooperation for an orchestra to come together. They've got strings, woodwinds, brass, and of course, percussion. By themselves, those instruments sound just fine. But when they all play together, they really make some noise. And music isn't the only place where cooperation makes a difference. Cooperation shows up in sports, at school, at home, and as we'll see in today's story, in tent building. Really, really, really big tent building. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. See you soon. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Exodus. Though the Israelites had been slaves in Egypt for hundreds of years, God had led them to freedom in the desert, and now they had to build new lives and a new place where God could live among them. So God called out to their leader, Moses. Come up to me on the mountain. A thick cloud covered the mountain as God spoke with Moses. Tell the Israelites, you have seen for yourselves how I carried you on the wings of eagles and brought you to myself. Now obey me completely. If you do, then out of all the nations, you will be my special treasure. God gave Moses many rules and laws that would help keep the people safe, but God gave the most detailed instructions for something very special. Have them make a sacred tent for me. I will live among them. Make the holy tent and everything that belongs to it exactly like the pattern I will show you. Okay, ready, taking notes. Make 10 curtains out of finely twisted linen with blue, purple, and bright red yarn. Sew cherubim into the pattern. The curtains must be 42 feet long and six feet wide. Make loops out of blue strips. Ugh, Moses' head must have spun as God gave him very complicated blueprints for a beautiful tent, uh, for all the things that would go inside the tent, and for the elaborate robes the priests would wear. Curtains, uh, lampstands, bowls, uh, altars, incense, robes. God, I, I don't even know where to start. God knew Moses couldn't take on this huge job alone. In fact, God already had it covered. Phew! After Moses had heard all of God's instructions, he came down the mountain and told his assistant, Joshua, Gather all the people. On it. God is going to make a home right here among us. We'll build an epic, amazing, ginormous tent for God. Who wants to volunteer? Maybe you should be a little more specific. Ah, uh, good point. Uh, one thing at a time, uh, Aaron? Moses pointed out his brother, standing near the front. Right here! God has chosen you and your sons to serve as priests in the sacred tent. Oh, we're honored, but, oh, oh well, uh, we need the tent first. Uh, exactly. We'll need a skilled craftsman to head up the whole project. Moses looked out over the crowd. Bezalel, son of Uri. The name spread through the vast crowd, and in moments, a young man with bright eyes and strong hands leapt off a rock and came forward. Bezalel, son of Uri, tribe of Judah, at your service. God has chosen you to lead everyone crafting the holy tent. Wow, okay. Uh, gonna need half a second here. Uh, don't worry, God's filled you with his spirit, with wisdom, understanding, knowledge, all kinds of skill. You're talking about me? Can you make beautiful patterns in gold, silver, and bronze? Well, yes. 
Can you cut and set stones? Yep. Work with wood? Absolutely. Craft as if Pinterest were already a thing? Theoretically, yes. God will give you all the help you need, starting with the uh, holy app. Another man stepped up, smile lines crinkling his face. Hey, man, that's me. God also had chosen you and given you special skill in all kinds of crafts. Oh, <laughs> totally rare. And to top it off, God has given both of you the ability to teach others everything you know. All right, we're so on it. We'll train up an entire team. <laughs> there was just one catch. We need to lay in supplies. Yeah, anyone seen a house depot? How about a tents to go? God will take care of it. Uh, uh, we, we need everyone to help. Please bring an offering for the Lord from what you have. Quickly, people came forward to give to the work of the holy tent. Uh, take these gold earrings and this necklace. I can haul in loads of acacia wood on my donkey. I've been saving this purple yarn. I picked the olives for this olive oil. In fact, the people had brought so much, the workers couldn't use it all. Stop. Please, we have more than enough. So under the guidance of Bezalel and Oholiab, a team of men and women stepped up to create the tent. They carved tables and altars and curtain bases. They crafted golden lampstands and bronze bowls. They spun and wove yards and yards of bright colored linen curtains. They sewed special robes for the priests and compounded beautiful incense to burn on the altar. At last, the tent of meeting was complete. Moses and all the people gathered together once more. You have done the work just as God commanded. May God bless you all. When everything was finally in place and the priests were ready, a cloud covered the tent and it filled with the glory of God that everyone could see. When the Israelites were wandering in the desert, God asked them to build a big tent. A tent we now call the tabernacle, where people could worship God and where God could live. Oops, you heard that right. God wanted to live with the Israelites in the desert inside of a big traveling tent. And God wanted the people to work together to make it. So. They needed people with all kinds of different gifts. Designers, people who could sew, people who could work with stone and fine metals. Plus, they needed teachers who could train people how to do all of those things. God knew that if they all worked together, they could make something incredible. God has always been big on cooperation. Think of Jesus. He could do so much on his own. He could work miracles, and yet, he chose to work together with a unique group of 12 disciples as he traveled and he taught. God wanted them to work together. And guess what? God wants us to work together too. You see, we are all unique. We all have things we're good at. We could be good at sports or good at math or good at coming up with stories. We could be hard workers or good at solving problems and by ourselves, we could do just fine. But when we work together, when we use our gifts with the gifts of other people, then we can really make some noise. So here's the one thing to remember today. God wants us to work together. Working together helps us get things done faster. It helps us get things done better. Plus, it helps us to grow the relationships with the people all around us. And that is a good thing. Thought we could use a pig finish. <laughs> I'll see you next time! <laughs>